bottom dollars. Chapter 4, Been Down There Too Long. A trailer home in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Minimum wage, $7.25 per hour. My name is Timmy Mitchell, and I live in Vicksburg, Mississippi with my mom and my little brother. Dorothy holds up a family photo. My name is Dorothy Mitchell. Tim is my son. Grew up, be a nice kid, graduated and everything from high school. You know, it was after graduation, about I think, a couple of months later. They signed him up for Midwest, and they started out there. A 14C certificate for Midwest. My name is Joan Farish. I work at Midwest Industries. It is a sheltered workshop. Participants are actually able to come on site every day, and they work. We recycle paper and plastics. I say, well, that's nice. He'll be able to get out the house, won't have to sit around the house all the time. he finds something to do with himself. It, it's OK. Why is it only OK? Tillman closes his eyes and looks down. Mm, it, 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 it's just it's OK. Title, School Transition Plan. Cheryl Bates Harris from National Disability Rights Network. Schools are supposed to develop a transition plan for individuals with disabilities so that when they exit the school system, they either go to work or some other appropriate post-school activities. We know from our work doing sheltered workshop monitoring around the country that most of these individuals go directly from the school system to the sheltered workshop. Mark Riccobono from the National Federation of the Blind. As soon as they get ready to graduate, we give them an opportunity through the transition programs to go tour the sheltered workshop and say, look at this, this is great. Stephanie Woodward from the Center for Disability Rights. You'll see the richer high schools have so many more resources and then the poor areas, what do we do? Oh, sheltered workshop. So their thinking is that if they go to the sheltered workshop, they will get the services and supports that they need there to move into post-school activities. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. What they end up with is a sub-minimum wage job in a segregated setting without the opportunity to talk about real work. Jackson, Mississippi. My name is Lauren Jackson. When I was in the shelter workshop, they had me bending over, putting clothes in the barrel. I had CP, so I couldn't bend over and then get myself back up. It took me a while to get myself back up. Uh, I had to ask somebody to get me up so I can reposition myself and then pick up some clothing and then bend back down to put it in a bear. That's real uh, demeaning. When they matched me up with the workshop, it was supposed to be just for a limited time. But as you can see, some people get stuck. Looking at the reality, you will find someone in a sheltered workshop today who's been in that same sheltered workshop for years. So if this is a job training program, I'm not sure how long it takes to train someone, but I think it's a bit excessive. Tillman's Trailer Home. I, went, I worked at Midwest 15 years. The first job I had, and I've been down there too long. Dorothy. So they say it's going to find him a job, and they did it. When did they say they were going to find him a job? Well... Uh, they started last year looking for him one. I went, went for my interview. They told me I got a job, and, and, uh, and then I liked it. So I clean up, sweep back in the floor, and then wipe out the veneer, pull the trash. And, uh, and I love it because I like to work out in the community, make good friends, new people. Get paid more money, seven twenty-five per hour. Help Help my family now, ma. Tillman vacuuming the floor at a hotel. Timeline shows Tillman's training in a sheltered workshop, leading to a part-time job after 15 years. Off-screen interviewer. So why, why did it take 15 years for Tillman? Dorothy. I have no idea. 
Tillman takes out the hotel's trash. Wish they would have started training him in school to do things like this, how to go out and get a job on your own. Probably could have got one right after. Tillman wipes down the soda machine. We've set up a pipeline to sheltered employment that starts at a very young age, where we start working with children with disabilities and telling them how limited they are. Well, there's a ton of alternatives. Um, we could start with a transition plan that um, with teachers and parents all getting together and understanding that this person has more value than 25 cents. A two-story house in Southampton, New Hampshire. Minimum wage, 725, Sarah Frost. I am Sarah, I am 23 years old, almost 24. Sarah commutes to work by train early in the morning. I'm in the shipping and receiving at the Boston Children's Hospital. When we first get there, we will have our meetings, then we'll start delivering all the packages, all 13 floors. Sarah pulls a cart of boxes through the hallway in fast motion. It's super busy all day. It is a tough job, but doing pretty awesome. Sarah's house. My name is Scott Frost. And I'm Robin Frost. We are Sarah's parents, yep. We live in this little town on the seacoast of New Hampshire, which you could basically throw a rock and hit Massachusetts. Though Sarah was in this community, she wasn't part of it. She didn't have any friends. She wasn't, she was never picked for any team. She, she, small school. Everyone would get off the bus to go to her birthday party and she was still sitting on the school bus and she got that. And granted, Sarah has more advantages. At the end of the day, she does have disabilities. I felt that she deserved more and I could do better. My name is Tanya Hart Newkirk and I am the PDMS account manager for OneSky and I also am a service coordinator. Sarah has some real goals ever since she was little. I think around age nine or 10 is when she started talking and one of the things she always talked about was really wanting to work at a hospital, specifically children's in Boston. And we have a transition team here at OneSky that works with adults starting at age 14 until they turn 21. So that transition team and the high school had brought this program to Sarah and her family's attention, and they all had decided that that would be a good fit for Sarah. Um, One Sky Community Services did support her with what they called vocational training, more vocational training, and then still wanting just a little bit more, we sent her to the Institute of Community Inclusion at the University of Massachusetts in Boston, Mass., and there is where she did her internship at Children's and then was hired by Children's. I'll, if I didn't have any access to those programs, I'll be just sitting at home doing nothing. And I don't like doing nothing all day. Timeline showing Tillman's 15 years at a sheltered workshop. Below, a second timeline shows Sarah's internships, leading to a full-time job in only five years. A co-worker slides a heavy box to Sarah. Can I have a look? Yes. How I am super proud of my job because I love being at my job, getting me going. See you tomorrow. Sarah wheels her cart out of a mailroom. Joan. When our kids get out of school, a lot of them, where else do they have to go? But to come to the workshop because they have an opportunity to learn to be trained. Hillman holds up a photo of himself at graduation, Laron. When I was in the shelter workshop, they told me, well, this is getting you ready for a job. I said, I'm already ready for a job. Share the full film in your community. Host a screening, bottomdollarsmovie.com.